So I was cleaning up in the craft room and I found this frame along the side of one of the cabinets where I keep my glass. And I had previously uh, taken the silicone caulk and gone along the perimeter of the back of the frame and sealed the glass in. So this has been dried for, I don't know how long it's been sitting there, maybe a couple of months. And then I took um, an outline of a blue heron and put it on the back, taped it on the back. And you can see I had painted this frame and then distressed it a little bit to prepare it. And then I guess I shoved it in the corner and kind of forgot about it. So then I took painter's tape and put that along the perimeter of the back. So the silicone caulking to hold, holds the glass in and it also helps to prevent resin leaks when you put it on the front of the glass. And then as an extra precaution, I put painter's tape along the back of the perimeter, kind of right over the um, silicone caulking that I put on. And this is just another precaution to help prevent resin leaks. In addition to this, when you're working with resin, you should also have some type of protective paper, cardboard or something underneath it, uh, just in case. So next I got out this beautiful blue tumbled glass that I thought would be real pretty for the blue heron. And this is glass that I prepared myself by breaking it up and tumbling it in my tumbler. And I started cutting it into shards to uh, make feathers for the blue heron. And it seems silly to um, take tumbled glass and cut it into shards, but I loved this color so much and I didn't have another uh, vase or anything that um, I could have used for it. So that's what I did. And see, I'm kind of making them as thin as I can, thin and kind of pointy like feathers would be. And I printed up these uh, pictures of the blue heron just to give me kind of a reference as to um, what the feathers look like and coloring and all that. And I just thought this blue would be real pretty. So you take your nippers and you just try to cut it as close to the edge as possible and you can as you can see and you got to be careful because this is very very sharp you need to be wearing safety glasses and i don't know if you could wear gloves because i mean i guess it would help but um the pieces are so tiny i don't know if you'd be able to hold on to them and really you should be doing it down in a box because the pieces fly now this is new, these are new nippers that I got, the Bria nippers, and it's supposed to be for people who have a hard time, like arthritic hands, uh, very, very expensive. I don't know if they're worth it. And it's kind of get, it's kind of hard to get used to holding them um, to position the nipper part of it compared to uh, the other one. It's, it might take a little while, but I'll let you know in a couple of weeks what I think of them because I don't really know if they're worth the price. I'm just going to put this in fast forward, so I just continue. I think you got the picture as far as how to nip them just as close as you can to the edge to make long, sharp feathers um, with the glass. And um, I did quite a few of them. I think I have enough to be able to start the project. But again, if you're doing this at home, you should have a little a box, a deep box, and hold your hand down in the box because the glass does fly and you'll end up with it all over the floor. And um, I guess it could fly and hit you. Uh, and safety glasses. You have to wear safety glasses while you're doing this also. And there's little teeny tiny pieces of glass that can uh, poke in your hand. But um, it's a fairly easy process. Next, I found some white glass and started nipping away at that like I did the blue to make little feathers for um, his head and his neck are white. Now, you could use stained glass for this just as well as you could find a vase or a plate or, you know, glass from the garage sale or thrift store or whatever for any part of this. This just happens to be glass that I have handy, so this is why I'm using this glass. But like I said, you could use stained glass or any kind of glass for this project. Then I went through my amber glass. It was really a long process, but I'm just showing you the little ones that I picked out. And out of these, I... I ended up picking out like eight to ten pieces of glass that I could use for the for a cattail. I decided I wanted to put cattails in the water by the blue heron and um, I decided this would be real pretty if I could get kind of a long oval shape looking like a cattail. 
and so I picked out eight to ten pieces that I was going to use. Then I had to figure out the stem of the cattail and I was going to use that vitrograph glass but um, I got it out and it was too squiggly. Cattail stems are very long and tall and straight so I couldn't use that. I thought that would have been perfect but so I decided to get some twine out that I had and I cut about 10 pieces and I went ahead and just painted each piece and kind of stretched it out straight so it would dry nice and straight. And um, I thought that one might be my best bet. So I started by using liquid nails to adhere the glass shards to the blue heron. And you could use any kind of clear glue that, you know, dries clear. And I just kind of worked in small areas at a time and um, put the blue glass down. And I did end up nipping up some dark glass to put in the special colored areas of the blue heron. He seems to have some darker colors on his shoulder and also a streak that goes from his eye to... Um, a feather that kind of sticks out on the back of his head. So the liquid nails I did in small areas because you really don't want it sitting there for more than 15 minutes. I mean you do have some working time but you don't want it sitting there too long. Next I put a beak on and then started working with the white glass up his neck and then I placed the black, get, bl black glass by his eye <laughs> and I found a, a yellow bead to uh, make his eye and I did paint a black pupil on his eye. Next I had to figure out what to do for the legs and I tried the vitrograph glass which was not um, didn't have enough straight pieces for it. I just didn't think it looked right. And I actually tried to cut up some stained glass too. And I ended up using those pieces of twine that I had colored uh, brown to make the legs. And I thought that worked out good. It just was really hard to cut the stained glass as thin as I needed it to be. So I just didn't end up using that. I ended up using the twine. And then I started gluing his legs down. Now, normally when I'm doing glass projects, I just set the glass there and then pour the resin over it. But these pieces were so tiny, I was afraid if I even moved the glass, they were going to fall and then I was going to have to start all over again. So I thought it would be in, in my best interest to um, <laughs> glue these little pieces down first. And I think that worked out the best. So then I just kind of looked at the little bird over real close and started adding little pieces, little shards of glass here and there to fill in where I thought some of the pieces were missing. And then I cleaned up the canvas real good because I had stuff all over it. And then I was ready to move on to the landscaping. <laughs> So this little bag of stones I actually picked up at an estate sale the same day that I was doing this. And I usually don't like going to estate sales because they're more expensive than garage sales. But everything at this estate sale was half off. I don't know if it was because it was the end of the day or what. but So I got those for a dollar. I thought that was a pretty good deal. And then I started putting um, water down. This is tumbled glass that I've tumbled myself. It's things I've picked up from garage sales and thrift stores and broken up and tumbled. And a lot of people, when they tumble their glass, they like it to be frosted like the real um, beach glass would be. But I kind of like it shiny. So I always put a tiny, it comes out real gray, I think, because of the grit, even after you wash it and, um, you know, rinse it off. So I always put a little bit of baby oil on it and rub it in real good. And it really absorbs it within a couple of days. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel greasy or anything to touch, but it just looks a little bit shinier. And then, of course, when you put resin on top of it, it makes it even shinier. But um, so this, the process of this project took a little bit longer than I thought because I had an idea in my head exactly how I wanted to do it, but I changed it like three or four times. I just wasn't happy with it. <clears throat> so the water doesn't really stay like that as you've seen from the picture at the preview of it. So next I start doing the cattails. 
the cattails were kind of a long process. So that's the painted brown twine that I had painted earlier and let dry. And then I start messing around with this glass that's called vitrograph glass. This is glass that I purchased online on Etsy. I believe it's from J&L Glass. And it comes in these long strings and um, it's all twisty and it's really neat glass. Next I start gluing the cattail glass to the stems and I use the liquid nails for that and I let that dry for several hours before I do anything else. Next I start assembling the cattails and all the little vitrograph glass and I'm actually gluing all the little pieces down just to make sure it stays in place because um, I'm afraid when I put the resin on everything's going to shift especially with that vitrograph glass because it's so thin and fragile. And now as you'll see when I'm done with this the cattails are kind of close to the heron's face and I'm kind of not liking that and I'm thinking about moving that over. And next I put some shells in that down and then I'm also <laughs> thinking about the water and I'm not liking the way the water looks and now that I'm all done with the project I'm thinking oh the water doesn't really look that bad maybe I should have kept it that way but oh gosh I'm always second-guessing myself so then I start moving the water around and making it more like a swamp area and just putting more stones on and the water kind of coming in and out of the stones. And then I decide I didn't like that either. So I take all of that up and um, I start putting these little tiny blue stones on and I really like that. So anyway, that's what I ended up keeping. So next I go ahead and I actually move the cattails even though I've glued them down. I pick those back up. I use a little razor blade to get under it and get under the glue and actually pick it up and shift it over. Now you can see it shifted over and then kind of cover it up with the stones and I'm using the razor blade to get the old glue off and that's pretty easy to do. Um, you know, if you make a mistake or want to change something, you can always move it. This is before you put the resin on. You're better off messing around with it then <clears throat> and making sure you like it. So that's what I did. And then I just gave the glass a good cleaning. So now I'm ready to use the resin. When I use resin, I wear gloves. I use a respirator. This uh, respirator is actually a new one I just purchased because my old one, the plastic cap kept on coming off that held the filter in. So I'm hopeful and hoping this one lasts a little bit longer. And um, these respirators are really inexpensive. If you're using a resin with the VOCs, you really need to wear one. This one was under $20 on Amazon. So anyway, the resin I'm using today is called Clear Cast 7000. It's a two-part resin, one part resin, one part hardener, equal amounts in a cup. You stir it for about three minutes. You stir it slowly. The slower you stir it, the less bubbles you'll get. You have to scrape the sides and scrape the bottom as you're doing it to thoroughly mix it. And it goes from being clear to cloudy to clear as you're mixing it and after about three minutes you'll notice that it's clear again and you're ready to put it on the project. I know it looks like I'm steering it real quick but um, I have the video sped way up so that we don't have to sit here for three minutes watching me stir it. So then I usually spoon it over the glass first and make sure I get everything there thoroughly covered and then I go around the sides and I push it around with the spoon usually. Now they say resin is self-leveling, but you really have to push it up into the corners and along the sides or you will end up with some empty spots. Now this is my kitchen torch that I have. I used to use the heat gun all the time, which was fine, but a heat gun um, blows like a blow dryer would and it actually pushes the glass around and at the same time it pushes the resin around which can push the resin up over onto the sides of the frame and everything and I find the kitchen torch is just so small and so convenient and so handy. 
At the very top, I sprinkled some Ashland Decorative Filler. It's a reflective glass that I picked up from Michael's Craft Store. And next, I take some isopropyl rubbing alcohol, and I put it on a cloth, and I clean up any of the resin drips around the frame. And I've gotten a few on there. Now this has to dry overnight. It temperatures between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit on a flat level surface. And I've learned that it's in your best interest to keep it covered with a plastic tote while it's drying to prevent any dust or debris from getting into it. Hey everyone, it's all finished. After much controversy as to how to do the, the water, <laughs> I'd be interested to know, I don't know if you guys just kind of fast forward through the videos or if you listen to me talk about how indecisive I was about this water situation down here. I'd like to hear from you guys if you thought you liked the light blue water better or this blue water. Uh, the thing that I didn't like about it was that they were bigger um, pieces of glass. It was the tumbled light blue glass. The color was real pretty, but they were such big pieces. I thought this looked prettier. And um, and then the as far as the cattails went, I just thought they were too close to his nose. So the other thing I was going to say was, so I didn't put any resin over his his beak because I felt like it would disappear if you did. So you know how I always say that the resin <clears throat> makes the glass that's transparent even more transparent. So an example would be not, I don't know if you can see this or not, but these cattails, I'm kind of wishing I hadn't poured resin over them because they were a little bit darker. I'm gonna try to hold that little piece of glass up there next to the cattail and see if you can see the difference in the color. I hope you can, because this is more, you can see this more <clears throat> than the resin, the one that I poured the resin over. So I kind of wish I hadn't. So that's something to think about when you're pouring resin over glass. If it's a really light color and then you pour resin over it, you, you just, it'll be more difficult to see. But um, like the darker blue like this, you know, you can see really well. And that really light blue that I originally had here would also have gotten lighter. But what got me started, well, what made me do the blue heron was because I had found this, <laughs> this frame shoved me on the side of the cabinet there. And I thought, oh, that's a pretty coastal frame. What could I make on that? Um, but anyway, so I was originally thinking about these shards of glass uh, with making a bird, a smaller bird, not the big blue heron. Um, when I make the windows, I've always wanted to put a little bird in the window with the flowers and everything else, but I just felt like you couldn't put enough detail in it with those big pieces of um, the tumbled glass or even the stained glass. And then I was looking around and on Pinterest, I saw that um, somebody had done a bird. It might have been under bird mosaics even, I'm not sure and um, they had used the little shards and it looked really cute and they could put more detail in the color and it looked more lifelike. And so that's where I got the idea for this particular bird. So I am gonna try some more birds with the shards, the smaller birds, and put them in some of my windows that I make and just see how, how it turns out. And I'm glad that this really worked out well. So, um, like I said before, I'm interested to know if you think I should have kept the blue glass or if you like this colored glass. I won't be offended. I just kind of like other people's opinions. Sometimes I can't make up my mind. And, um, oh, I was going to say something else. Oh, oh, and this looks just as pretty from the back as it does from the front. I don't know if you can see that. You can even see the little, uh, pu you can even see his eye, the pupil in his eye. I could, you could hang this in a window. It looks so pretty from both sides, I think. But the other thing I was gonna say was I've been corresponding with um, a lady who watches my videos, Wendy, and she's also a glass artist. She does glass art. And she said to hold um, hers in, all she uses is Elmer's glue. 
I'm assuming she puts the Elmer's glue down first and then the glass on top of it. And she says she's never had any problems, never puts the painter's tape around it or anything like that, and has not never had any leaks with the resin. So I thought that was really interesting. So I'm gonna try that next time for the heck of it and see how that works out. I would think that would be less expensive than buying the uh, silicone. So um, I'm interested to know, do you, what, if any of you do this kind of art, if you use Elmer's glue or silicone or liquid nails or, you know, exactly what you use. So, um, because that was news to me, so I can't wait to try it. <laughs> anyway, um, well, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.